Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Pet. This video is all about my automotive guilty pleasure, the Skoda Yeti. Now I'm gonna start this story back in the day when Top Gear was at the height of its powers. And a review by one of the three guys, especially Jeremy Clarkson, could make or break a car or even an automotive brand. Think what Jeremy Clarkson did to the aerial atom when he had that on the show for the first time. I remember as well the Discovery 3, when he drove it to the top of a mountain. That made me want one of those cars really badly, and we ended up actually buying one, once I could afford one anyway. Then you can think of the downsides, the things he did to things like Tesla when they had the first Tesla Roadster on there. And I know there's a whole bunch of stuff about whether they made up the review to make the car look bad. But that was the power that they had. And then fortunately, in my humble opinion, they got a little bit silly. Although those original reviews were a little bit far-fetched, it then got to silly challenges. And then obviously the cast moved to Amazon and a different cast came in, but it was never the same again. But I remember back in about 2009, Jeremy Clarkson doing a review of the Skoda Yeti. And up until that point, I don't think I would have considered any Skoda as a car that I would want to buy. And he did a review and it was a bit far-fetched, typical Jeremy Clarkson style. You know, typical things like he had a guy sat in the back having a tattoo. He drove it through a burning building with an ice cream and checking out whether the air conditioning was good enough to stop the ice cream from melting. And he landed a helicopter on it. Absolutely amazing, amazing review. But from that point on, my love affair with the Skoda Yeti started. And I have no idea what it is. I just think it's a car with quirky looks and yeah, proper guilty pleasure. So the story of the Skoda Yeti started all the way back in 2009 when the car launched, although there were concepts back as far as I think 2005. So the car came out in 2009, a compact SUV to replace the Roomster. What a stupid name for a car, but Yeti, Yeti was really cool. And it very, very quickly grew huge popularity and sold like hotcakes. It was cheap and affordable, massively practical. There was a huge range of engine options, gearbox options, trim options, and it just became an overnight success. In fact, I think it was voted European Car of the Year the year it was launched. And production of the Yeti continued until 2017, when sadly, Somebody in their ultimate wisdom at Skoda decided that they were gonna end of life it. Just, I, I just don't, I don't understand it. I guess it's not dissimilar to the guys at Ford deciding they're gonna discontinue the Fiesta. Duh. Such a shame. But there's something about the Yeti that I absolutely love. <laughs> So earlier this year, I was invited out to the Tour de France by Skoda. I'd been on a press trip out to Czechia a few months before. And actually on that video, although we got to see five of Skoda's new EVs in clay model form and talked about the future strategy of the brand, I mentioned in the title of that video, uh, something about whether Skoda would bring back the Yeti. And in the comments section of that video, it was clear that there was a huge amount of love for the Yeti. So when I was with the guys from Skoda at the Tour de France, I said, look, I am obsessed with the Yeti. I've never driven one. I just think they're cool. I'd love to have one and spend some time with one. And they said, well, we've got one in our heritage fleet. We'll, we'll um, hook up some dates when you get back to the UK. And actually what also happened while I was out with Skoda at the Tour de France, I went out to see stage seven and I was super lucky in that there was a raffle at the end of each day. And on the raffle at the end of stage seven, I won 
a green jersey from that day's stage signed by the guy who won stage seven that day. And the lovely guys at Skoda at the end of the evening said, look, give us the shirt, we'll take it back to the offices and we'll get it framed for you. And when we deliver you the Yeti, we'll also deliver you a framed shirt. So this car arrived last week with a very, very special gift prize, however you want to put it, in the back from Skoda, which made it really, really cool. And I put some pictures on Instagram and I had absolutely no idea just how special this Yeti I'm sat in is. No idea at all. I knew it was from the Skoda Heritage Fleet. I knew it was a 2009 car because of the number plates. And I noticed, I mean, it's only got 9,237 miles as I speak. It's got hardly any miles on it for such an old car. And I had no idea. And I put a picture on Instagram and loads of people messaged in and went, you do realize how special that car is, Pete, don't you? I was like, no. That's the car that was in the Top Gear review. That car, not the Yeti, not that year, not that color. This actual car was the car that Jeremy Clarkson drove in that Top Gear review that made me fall in love with the Yeti. Talk about things coming round full circle. Jeremy was sat in this very seat. The guy having a tattoo was sat in that very seat and a helicopter was landed on the roof, obviously. Well, it'd be rude not to land a helicopter on the roof in this review, wouldn't it? Now, I live under the flight path of Goodwood and there's helicopters flying around here all the time. It can't be that hard to get one to land. Hold on a minute. Uh, Chopper 365, you are clear to land on Hilo landing pad Skoda Yeti. That wasn't too difficult. No one's looking. Excellent. Oh my God, that thing is so difficult to fly. It's technically an indoor helicopter, but in all seriousness, how the hell the guys from Top Gear landed a proper real helicopter on the roof of this car is just beyond me. I found it difficult enough with this little thing. Might need to go and improve my flying skills though. Okay, so I cheated a little bit on the size of the helicopter, but I think you'll forgive me for that. <laughs> oh, how I wish I could have recreated that stunt. Sadly, I can't fly a helicopter and I don't think the guys at Skoda would be very happy with me somehow. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the car and I want to tell you a little bit about some of the other things that I find fascinating about this car and why I love it so much. Now, I wouldn't use the word design classic, but for me, it's still one of the best looking cars Skoda have made. Now, it's not actually a particularly big car footprint wise, especially by today's standards, but it came with a huge amount of practicality. It's a real TARDIS. It's huge on the inside and some very clever use of engineering and design. But the outside, even though this is a 2009 car, for me, it still looks as fresh today as the day it was launched back in 2009 edgy and quirky and cool. Now in 2013, the Yeti had a facelift. And for me, it's post facelift cars that are my favorite. The easy way to tell the difference between pre and post facelift are headlights. Pre facelift like this one, I've got two headlights, post facelift, just one headlight on either side. But a very, very cool car indeed. But there's some other touches that just make me love this car. Now, many moons ago, when I was a kid, one of my favorite presents I got one Christmas was a radio controlled car. It was a Lancia Stratos. And once you see this, you'll never unsee it. Lancia Stratos, this door, that shape just there 
it's straight out of Lancia Stratos. And every time I look at one of these, I think back to that car. Now, don't get me wrong, this is by no means a Lancia Stratos. Let's face it, that's perhaps one of the coolest cars Lancia have ever made, one of the coolest rally cars of all time, and easily one of the best sounding cars of all time. So I'm not saying that a Skoda Yeti is a Lancia Stratos, but the door, the door is. Now the Yeti was very much sold as a 4x4. In fact, if you go back to the Jeremy Clarkson review, that was like the main focus, driving it over fields and so on. This car from the Heritage Fleet, I'm not gonna be doing any of that. I just feel a lot of love and a lot of protection over this car. But they were also available in front wheel drive, but the four wheel drive ones, the pre-facelift cars had a fourth gen Haldex 4x4 system and then at facelift they went up to the fifth generation Haldex 4x4 system. They were also available in lots of different engine configurations. There were two different diesels, three different petrols and you could have them in a five or six speed manual or a six or seven speed DSG depending on which engine and 4x4 or front wheel drive option you had. So it was quite complicated but I'm pretty sure what made them sell like hotcakes was their practicality. They were just cavernous on the inside. Now with the seats up, you had just over 400 liters of boot space. But if you drop the seats and the front, front seat folds flat, if you've got something really big to go in there, in fact, you can even take the rear seat out. And if you do that, you have 1,760 liters of space in there. That's ridiculous. It's got really cool things in it like, look, hooks to hang shopping bags. Gotta love these rear seats because they can move that way and the rears recline as well. Now here is some great design. These rear seats, firstly, they fold flat. Next, they can fold forward. And if you really want to, they even come out. This interior is proper old school. No complexities. I mean, this model does actually have satellite navigation. It has a CD auto changer as well, but loads of buttons, none of this big touch screen rubbish, just nice and simple. It doesn't have any drive modes, although I must laugh because I got in the car and in the top left-hand corner, the little digital display in the middle. Um, when I was driving this morning, it was saying S, and I went, oh. And then when I got in it, um, after having dropped something at the shops, I'm driving away and it said N. And I went, oh, maybe that's sport and normal mode, but I haven't changed the drive modes. And I'm looking around on the dash to see about changing the drive modes. And then I realized it was a compass and S was for south and N was for north. <laughs> the only drive mode is basically you've got an off-road mode, um, which doesn't do anything to the suspension. It just enables things like hill descent control on the way down. You can turn the traction control off. But it's just a really nice, simple, simple cabin. Lots of practicality, some storage up here. You've got a sunglasses holder just up here. You've got lots of door bins, big enough for me to get my Skoda drinking bottle in there. It's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And how I'd never even been in one, never sat in one until I got in this car. And they always say, never meet your heroes. And it's not the best and most exciting car to drive. And I honestly, I haven't driven it that much. I've been very busy this week. And because it's got such low miles, I, I originally thought oh, I'll do a road trip or I'll go somewhere. And I just didn't want to do that because I felt really bad about putting miles on it. But it is a really, really cool car. Now I've said a couple of times about how good a condition this car's in. And talking to the press team at Skoda UK, it's literally just gone through a complete overhaul. It wasn't in such a great state apparently, and I don't think landing a helicopter on the roof did it any favor. So it needed quite a bit of work up top to make it look nice and tidy. And they thought, well, while we're doing that, we'll have a look on the underside. And it's safe to say the underside needed a bit of work as well. So uh, yeah, it's it's been made pretty and they've done a fantastic job. It's in such brilliant condition. But it's not until you spend time with the car, and I now totally understand why there's such a massive following for one of these things. I just thought it was the aesthetic, what they look like. And, and now, and I haven't, I haven't driven it a lot, and, and I haven't kind of lived with it really, but there's so much great design in this car. There's so many really well thought out ideas and gadgets. Anything from the, the shopping bag hooks in the boot, 
to the removable rear seats. It's just a brilliant, brilliant bit of design. And now I've driven one, I'm, I'm really happy because it's everything I hoped it would be. It's a really pleasant car to drive. I'm not driving it hard. I'm not pushing on. I'm not going to do a track day. I'm not going to take it off road. That's not the kind of review. This is just, it's almost like saying hello to an old friend that you haven't really met before. <laughs> Maybe you met them online. You've done some online dating and suddenly it's time for the physical thing. And that's, that's this drive for me. It reminds me a few years ago, I got uh, an, an old original Audi Quattro and I, I, the first drive I did in that, I didn't even turn the cameras on. I just went and drove it and enjoyed it. And that's what I feel about the Yeti. Would I like to buy one? Well, they were really cheap or certainly affordable when they came out. And now they're not made anymore. You can pick them up for reasonable money. You know, I don't know, 10, 15 grand would probably get you quite a good one. I haven't really looked on Autotrader on purpose. I'd like a, an end towards the end of 2017, the sort of the last run of them, because for me, I think they're the ones that look the nicest. And then I would love to really do a job on one. I'd love to sort of just put it on maybe some, some lowering springs, really nice set of wheels, maybe turn it into a kind of rally homage, rally flaps, big light bar on the front. I think that would look really, really cool. But I have loved my time with the Skoda Yeti, especially such a famous one. If you are a Yeti fan, put it in the comments below. I've had loads of people reach out already before me even filming this video saying, I've had one, I regret selling it. It was one of the best cars I've ever had. Many of you have reached out, you still have your Yeti and it ain't going anywhere. And I understand that, I totally get it. But if you enjoyed that film, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrobed for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film. You take care, guys. Drive safe.